Ukrainian forces move further into Russia in what's the largest incursion into Russian territory since World War II. Reporting from inside Russia, this Ukrainian correspondent makes it across the border. Glory to Ukraine, shout the soldiers. Glory to heroes, she replies as they throw the Russian flag to the ground. Ukraine says its troops have pushed even further into Russia in one of the most surprising developments of the war and captured over a hundred Russian servicemen today. It's the biggest foreign incursion into Russia since the Second World War. And to underline the point, Ukrainian television has been reporting from inside Russia. Ukraine's incursion began just over a week ago, a move that took Moscow by surprise. President Zelensky insists it is a temporary move, and he says he wants to set up humanitarian corridors so Russian civilians can escape. In a moment, I'll be talking to our Russia editor, Steve Rosenberg, but about how dangerous a moment this is for President Putin. But first, here's our Ukraine correspondent, James Waterhouse. No border checkpoint on this crossing to Russia, just a burnt-out Russian tank. A different assignment for Ukrainian war reporter Natalia Nahorna. This is a historical moment, she tells the camera, in the city of Suja. Such a claim might be premature, but Ukraine is talking up this land grab while it can. It's providing humanitarian aid and organizing evacuations. There are even plans to set up military offices. But on the battlefield, success always comes at a cost, as this injured soldier attests. Fear, adrenaline. You realize when you enter their territory how much we have suffered, how much our women and children have suffered, that now it's their turn. The head of Ukraine's armed forces is having even more regular meetings with the president. Since the beginning of today, troops have advanced around one to two kilometers in some directions. After the body blow of losing territory, Russia is now moving resources to try and take it back. As fighter bombers drop glide bombs on Ukrainian forces on its own soil, Kyiv today claimed to have shot one of them down. The Su-34s are thought to be 30 million pounds each. Kyiv is trying to change the politics of this war by shaking up the fighting itself. It's certainly done the latter. Messaging matters. It's really interesting to see it. For Ukraine, it's almost as important as the fighting itself. Why? Because it's looking to apply pressure on Russian forces as they struggle to combat well-trained Ukrainian troops. It's but they also want done to put the pressure on Moscow, on Vladimir Putin, to try and undermine his tough guy image in their eyes and try to undermine his invasion. But for now, it seems, uh, as reflected with continued fighting in eastern Ukraine as well as in the south, both sides, as ever, are more focused on trying to contain each other, which they're struggling with at the moment, but also trying to capture as much territory as possible. James Waterhouse, thank you. Well, let's talk to our Russia editor, Steve Rosenberg, who is in Moscow. How dangerous a moment is this for President Putin? Well, I mean, over the last two and a half years, there have been many potentially damaging moments for Vladimir Putin, like uh, the rapid Russian retreat from northeastern Ukraine in 2022, like when Vladimir Putin uh, declared partial mobilization, which sparked a lot of alarm in Russian society. And then that mutiny last year, you remember the armed mercenaries marching on Moscow. Vladimir Putin got through all of that, and I suspect he'll be confident that he can get through this too. But here's the thing, that mutiny, that was over in a day, but this is day nine of Ukraine's incursion into Russia, day nine of Ukraine seizing territory in Russia. And I think the danger for Vladimir Putin is that the longer this continues, the greater the pressure will be on Russia's leadership and potentially the greater the damage to his image. I mean, for 25 years, he has styled himself as the leader who can provide Russians safety and security. But safety and security are not two words right now that you would associate with Russia. Steve Rosenberg in Moscow, thank you. Well, let's talk to our security correspondent, Frank Gardner. What about Ukraine? It's a, it's a pretty risky strategy, isn't it, for President Zelensky? It is. I mean, yeah, it's a high risk, high return strategy. So ultimately, President Zelensky and his military chiefs 
are faced with a stark choice. Do they stay or do they go? This is not a simple shoot and scoot across the border, plant a few flags, take a few selfies and clear off back across into Ukraine. They appear to be digging in. There is already footage of them erecting barriers along the border, starting to build defences. They're talking about building a field hospital, evacuation routes. So the risk here for Ukraine is that the longer they stay, the greater the risk that Russia, as it slowly grinds its military operation into gear, will amass enough troops to either surround them, kill or capture them. And that will reverse all the benefit of this entire operation for Ukraine. But if they stay, they could use it as a bargaining chip when negotiations for peace finally start. Frank Gardner, thank you.